Okay, uh, we'll, we'll make a start. Uh, so my name's Joe, and I'm from Enrich Education. Uh, and we're here today, and all you guys who, are, who have joined us today, first of all, thank you uh, for joining us. To how to effectively incorporate Quidditch uh, as part of your National P uh, curriculum. Now, as I said, we will be recording the webinar, and we will aim to send this out to everybody, everybody who, who has logged on as well. Uh, there is a chat function on the, on, the, on the webinar, so if you ask any questions at all, I'll try and pick up. Uh, I have my colleagues, John and Jack, uh, who are lead coach, who's on here as well, so they can uh, relay any questions to me. And if we don't answer them, uh, as we're going through the webinar at the different stages, uh, then I'll try my best to answer as many as I can, looking at the chat function as we're going along. Uh, I'll stay on at the end, if anybody wants to ask any questions at the end, or also I can give you our details and you can email us through. Uh, and you can get in touch that way as well. So, uh, I know we've got uh, a lot of people and there's still some people joining. We, uh, we have school staff, uh, we have sports coaches, we've got some SGOs uh, um, throughout the country. Uh, so it's good to have you all here today. And I'm gonna try and uh, cover every topic uh, we can. Now, this is not a, um, a, a big and formal uh, quiz. It's just a slight introduction. We do run an introduction course we'll, we'll speak about later on. It's just a little way how you can see if you've never had Quidditch before, in your school or your area, if actually, oh, we've had that, we want to implement it a little bit more. Just today, people can take away some ideas uh, and they can start playing it and they can think actually it's a good and inclusive game to actually get going within their setting. So, uh, as you can see, who are Enrich Education? Okay, now some of you uh, who are on today have worked with us before on, on various uh, things like Quidditch, outdoor learning. Uh, children's University, so it's not just the one aspect of our business we do. You can see the types of organisations we partner with, with and who we're endorsed by. Uh, so we are Face for Sport endorsed, so for all our courses we're Face for Sport endorsed. We are a uh, business partner, a member of the Youth Sport Trust and the Association uh, for Physical Education and we're also part of the Youth Quidditch Group. Okay. Now the Youth Quidditch Group is made up by ourselves, Enrich Education, Quidditch Premier League, and Quidditch UK. We are the governing body uh, for the United Kingdom for youth Quidditch. Uh, now, there has always been in the past uh, an adult side of the game. Okay, so there's actually been uh, Quidditch Premier League, which is teams within local areas, and the Quidditch UK is a number of university teams which make up that association. Um, now, we all got together, we decided actually this works so well, this will definitely work with, with children. Okay, and that was a good few years ago now. And, I haven't been to over, uh, I think it's over 300 schools um, and different settings throughout the UK. Uh, that's why we decided now to, to let everyone know, plug it a little bit more to show you guys how you can start implementing it into your school education setting yourselves. Well, the webinar content today, so what we're going to cover, so again, you might have some questions and it might get covered straight away, but your question might get covered in one of the different sections. So. If we don't answer it, as I said before, just let me know at the end, okay? It's Quidditch in the P curriculum, the equipment you'll need to play Quidditch, the pitch setup, how can we actually just set this up and play, play in positions, and some basic sample sessions that you can get covered and you can take away today and go, actually, yeah, you know what? We want everyone to learn a little bit of something. We can start that tomorrow. We can set that game up. We can get this going as quickly as possible within our school. Now, Quidditch in the P curriculum, now we've found that we've delivered it from nursery all the way up to the year 11, okay? Um, and even we've done some, um, some international schools where it's been children from over 16, so 16 to 18, who have also played there. Once they get to the adult age then, that's when the Quidditch Premier League and the Quidditch UK kind of take over. So as guys, we just focus on uh, youth, okay? So mainly uh, nursery school, as we said, so each four to 16 years of age. Now, it's an engaging and it is a competitive sport, okay? One of the good things now is about, with everything that's going on in the world, uh, how can we still do competitive sports safely, okay? Now, from primary school age, or you join us from a primary school, you'd like to know that Quidditch is non-contact, okay? But it's absolutely brilliant. You can still play it now. You can still play it in your bubbles. Okay? You can still play it in your classrooms. It's non-contact sports and nobody is ever touching anybody else so all the health and safety that's going around cold at the moment it's great as we get older and older the contact does uh, get added into the game 
But again, we're going to explain today. We're going to talk a little bit. So that's not stopping you guys going, actually, do you know what? We can play the non-contact uh, version, depending on the age, just like different sports as you would do. So what we can see there, the main point of the curriculum that fit in with Quidditch at the different key stages. So for key stage one and two, it's mastering them basic movements. It is the jumping, throwing, running, catching, coordination, balance, agility. All of this is incorporated into a game of Quidditch. Not just like uh, many other sports where you think, and actually it's just going to focus on throwing and catching, okay? Everything is incorporated into the, to the one actual game on this. And you'll see a little video clip a bit later on where you see some uh, adult teachers playing there. We'll talk a bit more about it. And it is all them skills, okay? It's playing a competitive side of things, okay? Um, like the different sports and keeping it competitive, just as everything I've said, attacking, defending, invasion games, how we can go on there and we can move it forward. Key stage three and four, so as you get a little bit older, it does then come into tactics and strategies and it's a massive one for them. And you might think, oh, Quidditch, and you might have logged on today thinking that was a little bit quirky, uh, it's a little bit fun, it is. But there's also more of a serious side to it. We've had competitions in the past uh, for primary school level and you see the tactics the children and the teachers uh, and some of them on today you can actually testify to are taken on board and they're seeing things going actually if we do this and they're figuring it out and because it's a brand new sport for many people uh, it's a brand new activity and game no one's ever figured these things out before so it's great to see the kids actually going oh actually if we can do this and we do this in the communication and that's as they're getting that little bit older that starts to, to come in on board I can see with the, as I say, the sports uh, and the sport premium, it's to develop and add to your PE in school, okay? So this really does, it's a, it's a fun and engaging game. It has a targeted uh, audience and it gets everyone involved physically and active. Okay, so you might just think, well, I've seen over my years of coaching in schools, it's the same children a lot of the time who are in the football team, who are on the netball team, the basketball team, the athletics team, it tends to be the same kids. What we found with, with Quidditch, it actually engages everybody else. Okay, And we'll talk through that a little bit more as we go through, but you'll see it's those kids who might not ever have really engaged in sport before, might not even think they're playing the sport. They might just be imagining they're Harry Potter okay, or Hermione. Okay? They might be just imagining who they are, but they're actively doing that. And that for me is, is brilliant. It doesn't mean they're going to be the best Quidditch player in the world. Doesn't mean they might even take up Quidditch, but if they're active in their day-to-day -day life in school, and they're going away smiling uh, as a PE teacher, that's that's job done for me. That's the most important thing, the enjoyment and getting the children active. So again, as I said, just then the benefits to Quidditch, what we've just talked about, it's um it's fully engaged for everyone. Okay. We've had children from all over the UK, different backgrounds, different abilities, and everyone has played Quidditch. And everybody who's played it has always left with a smile on the face. And they've always left with a red face as well. And that's the two things. If you can get someone uh, really red faced, they've worked hard, but they're smiling. Absolutely superb, okay? Uh, at an adult level, Quidditch is the only full contact mixed gender sport, okay? So you've got to have male and female on the team. There's got to be four uh, of one gender and three of the other gender on a team. And that goes all the way down to the primary school uh, level. We felt that that was a, a real need in that because if our top level, our Quidditch UK and the QPL, they're promoting that and it has to be that. We feel that these kids can play it all the way through from, I say, nursery right the way through uh, to the adult level. It's mirrored completely throughout the sport. Uh, it does amaze children, okay? And it just it does pick up people's imaginations. Just as I said before, my background, uh, was completely was was football when I was younger. It was always football, football. As you get older, you become a PE teacher, you become a sports coach, you start learning more sports, getting qualified in more sports. I've never actually seen nothing like this sport for engaging every single child in the class. We've been into schools. Uh, our coaches have testified to this. But we've been, oh, that guy's hard to reach, or she's hard to reach. They won't really join in. Once they see it, for whatever reason, whether they're active anyway and they want to join in, whether just be an imagination and for that day they're a witch or a wizard, okay, or they're getting the Harry Potter theme through and you're hooking them in on that, by the end of it, they're just so immersed in the sport and the activity that a lot of that actually, uh, then the Harry Potter link goes out the window. But 
you know you can always do that cross-curricular engagement what we say to people we've had a lot of schools doing it as well they've been reading harry potter because it's relevant in schools at their age okay we've had the harry potter links the, the english the literature okay and then all of a sudden they're taking that into the sports side of things as well and vice versa you've got those kids who play the sport and they're active and they love it and then it's using that and it's using them cross-curricular um engagement and then take them kids back and go, okay we're going to read some of this today or we're going to do a little bit of uh, english we're going to do some workshops on harry potter linking into the quidditch side of things so you've got them two uh, flip sides of each different types of, of children no i'm just um... quidditch equipment okay so for people who don't know uh, the youth quidditch equipment it is actually youth quidditch equipment now people might have seen what do i need to play quidditch okay it's like any sport uh, people might have um, done this in school in the past and you're thinking, oh, I've used this, this ball or this and I've just set this up to this. Uh, we don't do that for other sports, okay? We don't want to go into schools going, oh, no, I'm just going to use a netball net for a game of basketball. Um, it's not the same equipment. Quidditch has specific equipment and specific equipment for the youth side of things as well. A lot of tests that went into all this equipment on the height of the hoops, Okay, on the, the softness of the ball, you've got to be able to grab the ball in one hand. You don't want to make it too hard or too soft or it's too easy. How the budgers, which we talk about a little bit, how fast they can fly, do they go through the air? Are they easy to throw? Are they easy to grapple with? Everything goes in to testing this equipment and it was a long, uh, it was a long process, but now it's out there and schools are using it. We've got uh, sports teams using it. We've got SGOs using it. It's all out there. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Quidditch equipment uh, as we go through, okay? So as you can see, uh, a little bit of writing on the page, and this was actually the picture taken from this is when we did it with uh, Evan Football Club, uh, and a school got invited to go with some of the players. Uh, and it was great to see because the players absolutely loved it as well. Uh, they, they were they came off uh, red face and they were saying some of it's harder than some of the training they'd just been doing, I think it was the day before the game. But again, it was great. It was great for the adults to mix with the kids different ages. Um, throughout all the equipment. So, hoops, there's six hoops overall, okay? And there's three at either end. And a hoop is it's, it's a weighted base, uh, it's a pole, and it's a hoop. Now, the hoop is a, is a, is a diameter of 32 inches, uh, and it has to be that diameter. That is the size of the hoop, okay? Other people go, oh, I'll just make any hoop. That is the size of the Quidditch hoop. Just as I said, you wouldn't just make a football goal, you would have a specific size for youth level, and then for adult level, it's the same with our hoops. Six. Three at each end, correct sizes. Okay. The game balls, we have two game balls. Okay. We have a quaffle, which is the bronze ball you can see on the screen. Uh, and that is the game ball that is used to score the points. So the basic um, job of the quaffle is to get it and throw it through the hoop to score points. Okay. The bludgers of the ball, I like to call the defending ball, okay, or the tagging ball. And they're used to get the quaffle ball back. Okay. So to if you hit someone who's holding the quaffle ball, for example, they've got to give it back to your team. They're smaller, they're lighter, so they're a lot easier to throw. Uh, and they are the double skin, the durable rubber coated skins. So they actually don't peel apart. When they hit people, it doesn't hurt. Okay, so they're really soft being tested. Uh, and they're the game balls. So on the pitch, there's one quaffle and there is three bludgers. Okay, there's three bludgers, one quaffle. And they're split between the two sides, which we'll talk about a little bit more when we get into it. Then you also have the golden snitch belt, okay? And this is worn by the snitch runner safely uh, around the, the waist uh, with the tags, we like to say, at the back, okay? So it's, it's easy for the, the, the children or the adults to grab, whoever's being the snitch for the day. Uh, and there's two tags attached to the belt, always clearly visible. So we have a lot of teachers when we go into school and some of who are on here again today. We have tucked them into the, the pocket so the kids can't see them, but they never really actually want to get want to get caught. The setup, uh, as you can see on the screen, the setup uh, is a rectangular shape, okay? Now we found, um, we went into it, it used to be when it first started, it was an oval shape, just like the books and just like the movies. Uh, rectangular fits in with a lot more of what um, sports centers, schools, um, education facilities, what they have available to them. And we found it was a lot easier uh, for the children as well. Sometimes when it was oval shaped, as the pitch started to cave in, the kids would keep on going in a straight line. 
Okay, so they actually run off the pitch. So making it rectangle and making the more in line for those sports like your netball, your basketball, your football, your rugby's, making it more in line with them, we found uh, it was a lot easier for the kids when it's brand new to actually uh, to grasp the rules of the game. Now the start line is at the beginning of each game. Every player has to line up behind the start line. Okay, and you can see the balls are placed out in the middle. Every player lines up at the start line. Then we have the goal lines. The goal line is just where the hoops are actually situated. So they have a certain place which they're situated across the goal line. And then we also have the keeper zone. Okay. So as I said, start of the game, players will line up on their start line. When setting up the goals, okay, they got to be placed on the goal line in enough space in between for players to go around the back or in between each goal. So you're not just setting them up in a tight space. Okay, and again, in the rule book, if you're on our website, you can get it on there. It also tells you the correct spacing in between each goal line. So you don't want to set the goals up completely wide. It'll make it too hard for the keeper, as we talk about a little bit later on. And then the keeper zone, okay, is the zone where the keeper can move freely without being tagged or hit by one of the bludgers. Now, I know it's a lot you're probably thinking to take on. You might be writing a lot of this down, but don't worry, we go through each section, we break it down a lot more as the webinar is going to go on. The keeper restarts the game right back. So if you score a goal, go straight to the keeper, restart straight away. It doesn't have to go back to centre. The balls don't have to get started back up, uh, back in the middle, or you blow the whistle. As soon as a hoop is scored, as soon as points are scored, the game starts again. It's non-stop, okay? It's literally non-stop. We're not waiting for any referees to start the game, or you have to be there or there. We just start as soon as they get it. One team's busy celebrating, the other team can go around and they can score down the other end. Okay, so positions. I've mentioned a few of them in here. And again, you might be thinking this is a lot of, if you're not familiar with the uh, with the Harry Potter books or the, or the movies, you might be familiar with these, with these words. So I'm going to go through them a little bit and just give you a little bit of an insight uh, to what each position does. And hopefully this breaks it down for you a little bit more. And you can actually think, oh, actually, it's just made simple. That's what we say to the children all the time when we go in. If you watch the game at Quidditch at first, it's like anything new. You just think, oh, what is going on? Okay, it's great. Everyone's moving. The ball's flying everywhere. People are throwing. People are scoring. People are chasing each other. When you break it down to the positions, each position just has their own specific job. Okay? So the keeper's job, as you might have guessed, is just to protect the hoop. Okay? To stop the quaffle ball going through the hoop. Okay, they can also use the quaffles. They're a quaffle player. They can score goals. They can run out of that keeper zone. So it's not just we get a lot of skills. Oh, I don't want to be the keeper. I'm not allowed to leave. You can. Okay, you can leave your hoops as much as you want, and you can join in. That's when the kids might think, oh, actually, if I leave, someone's going to score if we lose the ball. And that's when your tactics, as you get a little bit older, start to come into play. The chasers. Okay, so there's three chasers. And it's their job to score goals with the quaffle ball. That's the job. That's it. They're the players, okay? So they can pass the ball to each other, they can throw it to each other, and they can put it through the hoops. That's their one job, mainly to score the goal, okay? The beater, as I said before, there's two beaters on each team. The beaters can't be touched by any other player, but they can hit each other with the bludgers, okay? So non-contact, and that's how they get the quaffle back before, as I said, by hitting the chaser who's carrying uh, the quaffle ball. They kind of, when you're explaining to the kids, might want to explain as you're the defender, okay? You're stopping people from scoring, okay? What you might see is they just run around and hit whoever they want, okay? So the tactics might not have came into it yet, depending on the age and the ability of what you're teaching. But again, like I said, you know, if they're running around and they're hitting people, and the practice and them throwing skills we've done in some of the drills leading up to it, taking them into a game, moving, it doesn't really matter, okay? If you've got a team, that's when, yeah, the tactics start coming in and you're going to do more of coaching. But if you've got people who are just running, throwing, hitting and doing their job, that's brilliant. Then the seeker, and it's the seeker's job to chase the golden snitch, okay? Uh, and the seekers need to grab that snitch belt, what we talked about before in the equipment setup, in order to get the points. 
Okay, so the keeper. We're going to go in, a little quick animation. As we've explained there, it's the keeper's job. You can see we've got our three hoops set up. And it is actually uh, quite a tough job. Because you've got to imagine these hoops are not right next to each other, what we said before. These need to be spaced out so you can actually run through and you can have that. So if they just stand by, I'm just going to guard this one hoop while well, the children are going to move to the other hoops. So the keeper's got a really tough job. And the great thing about the keeper is they can score. Okay, they can run out and score. So they get the most of the ball. If you get scored past, you start with the ball. It's always up to the keeper to start with the ball. As you can see from our animation, okay, our keeper's just protecting the goals, going from one to the other, and you've got to protect all three, making a save, and then constantly moving throughout the game. So it's not just standing there. You've got to be alert. You've got to follow this game. And it's a tough game to follow for when you've got balls flying everywhere. But if you just get that keeper to follow that quaffle ball, the bronze one, that's all they need to protect. They need not to worry about anything else. So when you're breaking it down, tell your keeper, protect that bronze ball from going through your hoops. That's your one job uh, for the day if you're going to be the keeper. The chasers, as we said before, their job is to score. Okay? So they need to get that quaffle ball. And they can go to any hoop. There's not a specific hoop you go to. You can run around the back. You can score from either side of the hoops. Okay? And that's a great thing for the kids because you've got that space on the back. It's not like traditional sports where if it goes behind the goal, the game's dead. The referee blows the whistle. If it goes off the pitch, we start again. If it goes behind the goal, there's still yards of space to use. So if the ball's just there, it's not about the keeper then going to get it. Anyone else can go and get it and score from the back. And then you're making the keeper switch on a little bit by, oh, these can score from either side here. So then you get them children and you're learning them tactics about, we might put someone behind the goal and we can just throw it to them to score. Okay, so there's different ways you can actually score. You've got three hoops and effectively you've got six and you can score from behind. You've got six different targets which you can effectively score points for your team. Then we've got the beater. As we said before, it's the beater's job to get that quaffle ball back. But if you see on the animation, once they're chasing the chaser, okay, chasing the chaser, if they hit the chaser, the chaser has to drop that quaffle ball. That quaffle ball now goes back to the beater's team. That's how you win possession back. So it's not as they get older, uh, you can start actually taking possession back off them. So a little bit of ruby tactics in there. But for the younger ones, right the way up to year seven, um, the beater has to get that ball back for them. Unless they drop it or intercept it, that is the main way. So their main focus, you're telling the beater, you don't worry about scoring points. You don't worry about protecting the goals. You just hit anyone who's holding that bronze coffee ball. You get that back for your team, okay? You hit as many people as you can. So everyone is always having a specific job and it gives that ownership and that responsibility to the children who are actually uh, who are actually playing the game, right? Actually, this is my job. Yeah, no one else can do this. I'm going to do it for the best of my ability. And the CKN, as you can see on the picture there, the CKN we've had a lot of the times so the teachers, and you guys, when you're teaching the lesson, children love it. Okay, they love chasing the teacher or the coach, uh, whoever's uh, facilitating that lesson. That's great to see. And the teachers and the coaches, uh, as you guys are testifying to, I'm the same. I don't like it in court. Are you doing your best not to get caught, which is really good. It gives the kids a lot more of a chase. So you can see, once the golden snitch is released onto the pitch, okay, and there's a certain time, and again, it's all in the rule book you can download. There's a certain time the snitch releases. It's up to that chase, uh, to the seeker, sorry, from each team. So there's one seeker on each team. It's up to them to chase that golden snitch and get one of them tag belts back. And just like the other um, positions, the keeper, it's the only one who can block the ball going in the goal. The chasers are the only ones who can score points. The beaters are the only ones who can use the bludgers to hit people with. And the seeker are the only ones who can actually get this uh, the snitch belt and the snitch tag off the off the snitch. So everyone has a role. But well, it's not like where you may have seen and a reference back to football, where you've got kids who think, I don't want to play, but I'm not really confident. So uh, the other kids kind of don't pass or they score all the goals. Not like that at all. There's only certain positions, certain players who can do their job. And we, we, we had the finals in um, it was the North Northwest finals last year uh, before before uh, COVID. 
I was a young girl and uh, the teams were drawn and she called the snitch to win the whole thing, the Northwest Trophy for her team. And I did a light on her face because that was her who'd won it. Okay, that was her. It was everybody uh, cheering for them. And that was their position because it was, it was great. It was ownership and she took ownership of that. And it was really good um, to see. So moving on, I'm going to go through uh, a couple of basic uh, sessions. Okay, now these aren't uh, full sessions. These are just uh, some activities that you may take away today um, to think, actually, yeah, no, what? I can I can try that. I can try that. Or you might think, I've got an activity in here that I wouldn't mind trying. Uh, that'll fit with that as well. Again, we're trying to get you guys implementing this within your school. Okay, getting the kids going, it, seeing how it can fit in, uh, how it is engaging, everything we talked about at the start, how it is active. I was working on running, rowing, jumping, hey, all the different techniques, how we can link in to the, to the national curriculum. So the beta session, we always say set out a large playing area. Okay? You don't want to make anything, just like with any sport, you don't want to make it tight. You want to give the kids a little bit of freedom. Okay, If you've got the facilities outside, go outside. Okay, It is an outdoor sport. The equipment is for outdoors, but it also lends itself uh, to indoors. But like most sports, kids prefer it, adults prefer it. Let's get outside, and especially now with the advice we're getting from like the Youth Sports Trust and the Association for P that's coming down from the government, let's get outside as much as we can. So we're thinking, what can we do outside here? Well, we can play Quidditch outside, the balls are waterproof, okay? The equipment is all weather. We can get outside and we can actually play. Um, and the, the, the hoops are also easy to carry around and to move, so they don't need to be static in one place. We can play on the field, we can play on the mugger, on the astroturf, the pavement, or even in the hall if need be. So set out a large playing area, split the children into different teams. What we're gonna do is pick two children to start as the beaters, unless you're just practicing their throwing technique, okay? And that means throwing technique where you're not just running up to people and tagging them with the ball, we're actually gonna learn, oh actually, can we throw it? What throw are we gonna use? Are we gonna use an underarm? Are we gonna use an overarm throw? When are we gonna use that? Well, if they're further away, we might do the overarm. If they're closer, we might give it an underarm. We want to practice this to link in with the curriculum uh, as much as we can. And what we just say, because we're practicing the throwing, we don't want the beaters to leave their penalty area and just run up and tag people. But as you can see from the setup, we've got our zone setup. And we've got our beaters on either side. Okay, now you can get that going. You can get the imagination going. For the kids, you can think, okay, who are the beaters going to be? Or they could be uh, Voldemort, or they could be the Malfoys versus the Potters, okay? And you can get that language and you can get that cross-curricular in, especially if you're reading the Harry Potter books and you're doing some English work on that. Get it in there, okay? Let them think, oh, yeah, I remember reading that last week. And you're mixing it up all the time. They'll be a lot more engaged. And as you can see from the animation, as our players run across on the coach's whistle or the shout, it's up to the beaters. Can they hit someone? We got it. So one guy gets through and the other two are then out. Now you can go right out there. You're out. That team won, or you can go, actually, if you've got enough bludgers, if you've if you've got like 15 bludgers, you've got more, you can join them on the outside. So you're making it harder and harder uh, for the people, whether they're the potters in the middle, or you're just going with the, they're actually going to be the chasers, and you want to start getting that language into it a little bit more. Entirely up to you. Chaser session, again, always set up. Start out that, uh, that, that setting area. Most important thing, get it out there, get it squared off, make it as big as possible. Split the teams, okay? As many teams as you can. So we've got four teams, okay? Try and split it so we're not just waiting in turns. What we don't want is kids just sitting there, waiting their turn all the time. Just like the games, the, the full-on uh, matches, we want to make the activities as quick, as active as possible. So we're not just sitting there all the time waiting for your turn. We want everyone to go. We come back. The next person goes. It's like relay race, moving back and forth and engaging. They're getting used to then actually when we go into the game, keep moving, okay? One thing people do in, in, in school sports and in PE lessons, uh, I've found is it comes to it and the kids go, wait, stop, I'm not allowed to move. Can't move, okay? Because that's what I've been told in, uh, in different sports. I'm not allowed to move. Quidditch is total opposite. Quidditch, you've got to move. If you don't move, you're going to get hit, okay? So we want to teach the kids in every activity we do. Come on, move fast as you can. Pass it, when to pass it, you're going to get hit. Running. Don't stop. It's a non-stop active game. And that's the beauty of it, okay? You get a half an hour lesson of non-stop. It's hard work. So just keep uh, moving as much as we possibly can. 
So, what you can see on the animation, we've got our four teams, okay? We've got blue, yellow, red, and we've got green. And it's just a relay race, okay? So who can score the most amount of points? So again, coach's whistle, you can see our blue and green, they're gonna run out, grab the quaffle ball, okay? Green scores, blue misses, grab it, bring it back, next person goes, as many points as you can possibly get. Now again, little progressions on this, as you've just seen, we had them throwing it from the middle of the pitch, okay? The little ones are they going to be able to throw it from the middle depending on the size 30 by 30 probably not there'll be some shot if they actually get it in just like quidditch they can go as close as they want they can go behind the goal throw it through so the ball's already on the way back to that next player okay let them try and figure it out a little bit you've told them some of the rules okay if they stop and throw it what can you do i can go closer yeah you can go as close as you want okay let them have that um, ownership of their position being the chaser. Then we have our keeper session. And this one, uh, as I said before, you get a lot of children thinking, I don't want to be the keeper. Um, keeper this game, once we introduce this to schools, kids love this game. They want to be the keeper all the time. Then. And that's why it's always good to not just go into a match straight away, like any sport, don't just go into a match. Teach them some, uh, teach them some of the skills and the drills involved, okay? Get the language going. Let them see what the different positions are actually like. Let them then make their mind up because they'll associate the keeper with being maybe a keeper in football that they don't want to be or a keeper in, in, in any other sport, okay, that they can't move outside their area. Make sure you warn them it's not like that. It's completely different. So again, splitting the teams up, placing a ball in a centre circle uh, on a cone. And it's the idea is they've got to protect that ball at all costs, okay? The chasers around the outside, they've got to knock that ball off the cone using another quaffle ball. So they're getting used to passing and shooting at the same time. Uh, the keeper's getting used to actually um, spatial awareness, when to defend, to make themselves big, um, to not enter the zone and go back and knock the ball off. So again, you're getting used to all that. Uh, and again, it's only a quick minute here and there with this game. I like the others, quick minute of actually hard work seems like a long time. And we can change everyone up so everybody gets to go within your group within a five minute session if you split your groups into four teams within a five minute session everybody's had to go at being the keeper so as you'll see from the animation we've got a center circle which the keeper can't enter with the outer circle which the chasers are not allowed to enter okay the idea is keeper and save it intercept the ball staying within their own zones so you can see the chasers around the outside are passing it. The keeper's just blocking it off. We want the chasers to dummy, to move. And again, one point to our keeper. If the minute's still going, throw the ball back out. Carry on playing. Make sure you get that full minute in each. Don't just say, um, well, you could say, actually, if you intercept it or you save it, that person moves in the middle. And you can just get the game flowing all the time. Or you can give each person a good go in there and getting used to the different skills uh, needed to be a keeper in Quidditch. And then the seeker session, okay? And again, it's about using that language as well. It's getting the Malfoys versus the Potters. Okay, it's getting uh, anyone you want, okay? If you're reading the book, depending on what book you're on, uh, get it in there, okay? You might be on a chapter, you go, right, okay, we're actually gonna be, yeah, we're gonna be them today, or we're gonna be morts. We're gonna be whatever you want. Let the kids decide that, okay? It's a good one for the kids to decide. If they're remembering, uh, from the books you're reading or some of them might have uh, watched the movies if they're engaging it's even better to get them active in the sport okay so let them decide what do you want to be today it might be a child who's never really engaged in the sport i want to be harry potter okay you can be harry potter today it means they're going to join in and run around you've never really got them to engage in pe anymore uh, in the past that's that's an absolutely massive win for you guys it's a great win for the children because they'll see the benefits of the physical uh, activity that you're going to do uh, with Quidditch. So what you've got, you've got two teams lined up in the middle. And all you're going to do, you've got an end zone each. Okay, so you've got the Potters on the left-hand side, you've got the Malfoys on the right-hand side. You're going to call out Potters or Malfoys, and that team has got to make it to the end zone. The opposite team has got to try and take the snitch belt from their partner. Now again, remember, it's no contact, so you're not pulling the T-shirts or pulling the trousers, you're just pulling that snitch belt, which clearly has to be visible for you to get points for your team. Great thing about the snitch belt, once you get a point, tag it back on, we can go again. Okay, it's really quick. Uh, it's not like you've got to separate all the cones and get the bean bags back. 
because you've done them in different games. Belt on, off, okay, nice and quick. You'll see, off has been called, Malfoy's chasing it. If you don't make it, we've just got four points for our team because no one got our belt and it's just competing against each other. Then all you do a little progression, literally just move one person from the uh, potters down one, or the racing or the playing against a different person every time. Okay, so we've got different abilities uh, tagged up. You might have some faster kids or some kids who react faster. Uh, so you don't want to just play against the same people all the, all the time. So it's really good, uh, this one. Uh, and Jack, we said before, our Leeds coach, we did this in Bolton. And he didn't get caught once and you should have seen how happy he was and he's done this hundreds of times uh but it does it get you engaged in everything uh to do with quidditch within the within the positions that we play so a game setup you can see there now before as i just said i showed you the pitch it had the start line it had the uh, goal line it had the keeper zone you might be thinking i haven't got a quidditch game uh, a pitch set up within my school or in my sports center uh, doesn't matter, okay? If you can just cone off a rectangular shape, get the goal set up, leave some space behind, you don't need to mark the goal line at all, okay? Just as any other sport, people always say this, me, oh, but we haven't got this and we haven't got the pitch marked out in Quidditch. I'm like, okay, have, you have a football pitch marked out all year round? No, we just throw the goals up either end. Same thing, okay? You know where the balls will go halfway, okay? You're facilitating it. Set the goals up, get them playing, okay? Don't worry about... Oh, we haven't got this line and this line and this line. Get them going. The kids will figure it out. They'll actually enjoy the game. And it's more about the skills they've been learning. So them activities we've just went through. You've got to imagine, <coughs> excuse me, you've got to imagine that you've you've done activities. Okay? And you're always going to finish with a little game. It's always good to finish, like in any sport, with a game. Just to put them things in practice, even if you don't know all the rules. You might just be practicing throwing that day. So you might just be going, right, we're going to practice a game. We're really just going to concentrate on the beaters in this game and see how well the beaters do. So we're not really playing for points. It's great to score points. But until we've learned all the rules, you're not really going to get into it to a full game. Um, just like, just like as I say, with, with football you know, or rugby, you're not going to play offside from an early age. You're going to teach them that and progress that as they go along. And there's a lot of progressions to be had with Quidditch. And from one of the first slides where I said where they fit in with the national curriculum, it's brilliant because every year there's something else to progress with. So you're not just going, all right, it's the easiest game in the world. Everyone knows how to play once they're in year three. And we're never going to progress. What you want from a sports coach, from a PE teacher, you want that progression all the way through. And that's exactly in the rule books from, <coughs> excuse me, from uh, children to adults. You've got that steady progression where every year, every year something else is added into the game. It's something new um, to, to, to learn all the time. And it's just like, as you say, you've got other sports like dodgeball, okay? okay? And that dodgeball is great. We've played it in schools. Absolutely love it. But progressively wise, when you're getting older, there's not that progression in there. It's not like your, your footballs and your rugby's and your, and your basketball's and now your quidditches, where you've got that, uh, that progressiveness every age group to constantly go through in your national curriculum and hit them points uh, that you're going through. So you can see the game set up, set up like that, straightforward. One team at one end, one team at the other. Uh, on the whistle, run to the middle, collect the balls. You'll notice there's four beaters. There's only three bludgers, okay? You can only carry one at a time. So only on one team, there can only ever be two bludgers. To get that bludger back, your beater could hit another beater and then give it to your partner. So there's always going to be one space. So again, while you're following the quaffle ball, if we keep it up with the language, um, you also, if you're a beater thinking, actually, my partner hasn't got a bludger. If we want the best chance of winning, I need to get that back. So now you're thinking tactics. Now you're speaking to each other. Okay. Now you're going a different way. And just like if they throw it at you uh, and it misses, your beater can pick that up as long as they haven't got a ball. It's not their ball. It's anyone's ball. These balls are live. Okay. It's not like that's your ball. You can't get it back. It's anyone's. If that ball is on the floor, pick it up if you're a beater. You're chasing that quaffles on the floor, pick it up, okay? And that's how we just want to get in there, set a game up real simple to actually get it going. The equipment, uh, and there's links to our, our shop page, which you can see on the on the chat function. Uh, and it's got the, the, the price of the equipment. So again, if, if anyone wants to, to, to take an order, uh, happily to hang on at the end. 
well, you can get that link to our shop page. You can have a look. You can ask us any questions you would like on the equipment. Uh, and what you can see there, we've got the six hoops and we've got a starter pack. So our starter pack comes with a snitch belt, okay, a rule card, waffle ball, and the three bludges. Getting the game going. Okay, so that's enough in your school to get that game actually going within your setup. You've got the hoops, you've got the starter pack. Let's get it going. If you want to take it and you want to take it on, which again, most people want to bought or they purchased the starter pack and the hoops, you then start setting the clubs up, okay? And you realize, just like any other sport, we can't just work off one ball. Okay? It's good to have more balls. You can do more skills, more activities. Um, you can have more clubs going on, especially if you're doing this in separate club balls, as it is now. Um, you've got all that. So you can see we've got a pack of 15 bludgers and we've got a pack of five waffle balls also on there as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. We also run uh, some Quidditch training, which I said at the very start is first for sport indoors. Okay, so if you will get a certificate for the uh, for the first for sport indoors Quidditch training, now this is a basic, uh, this is an introduction, sorry, into how to play Quidditch. Now this is a physical one uh, where we come out, and we'll come to your setting, and we'll set up and we'll teach you more activities. Uh, we'll we we'll go through all the rules more in depth. Now again, it's it's the rules depending on your age range with your going for. So your primary school, they'll be going through the age range for primary school. Your secondary, they'll have some of the primary schools they do mix in, but all the secondary ones that have also uh, been added on in there as well. And as I say, it's endorsed. I completely say it's a vibe by the Youth Quidditch Group, Quidditch UK, and the Quidditch Premier League. Okay, so it's really good and it's active and it is an engaging course. It's not. Come, we'll come for the day and we'll sit there and you'll get your pens and your pads out and we'll learn uh, that way. We're actually going to do it, okay? We're going to play the game. We feel, and when we spoke to Credit UK in the Premier League, and also uh, that's why First Sport did endorse uh, Enrich, was that like we like to be active. We like to show people that way, okay? It's a sport. We don't believe in sitting behind a uh, classroom, pen and paper, and that's how you teach people sports. Best way to teach people sports get out there and physically, uh, physically do it, okay? Get that knowledge, get that understanding, get that confidence to be able, <clears throat> excuse me, to be able to deliver Quidditch sessions within your school. Now within that as well, which a lot of schools have done in the past, is they put an event day from us. So we have our coaches come down, um, and it's from nursery to year six, or if you're a secondary school, whatever year group you want to teach, we can come down, we can do a full event day with your school. So we do a sort and hat assembly. If uh, restrictions at the moment still allow, we're happy to do it. We do a full day with every class. So we can fit up to eight classes within the school day. That's around 25 minutes to half an hour per class. Again, you can go, okay, we might just do four classes and get an hour out of it. Key stage two, key stage one, key stage three. And then we can tag the training onto the end of that as well, uh, which are many schools are doing now rather than just having the training like to see how it works, like to see the engagement of the children. And also like it's, it's, it's a little way of when you're, you are watching our coaches uh, teach it actually, all oh, right, okay. So even um, you've got the training, but you've got that hands-on training and you can join in and you can be part of it. It's all structured to suit your, your school. We've also then got what we're saying for the training is, uh, so in, in areas, so your local SGO areas, we've got inter-school tournaments. Okay, uh, we ran some tournaments before uh, before the COVID for this year hit, uh, and that's what we're trying to get out there. We're trying to get people in their local areas. So once the schools are getting the playing in, and then our SGOs can then take over and they can run the local tournaments, and then we can eventually have that national tournament once obviously um, everything allows to get all schools competing and playing uh, against each other uh, throughout the country. Uh, I'm just going to show you now just a quick uh, video. Um, these were actually secondary school teachers, a lot of these. Uh, some of them were, were primary as well. Uh, and we had some SGOs on board this day. And this took place at a, a whole wonderous training ground. And it was, it was good to see because a lot of the secondary, they turned up and I've been sent on this um, by my um, my boss or the P lead. I'm going to go on this one a little bit intrigued to see. And they didn't know what to expect. And if you just watch, um, you'll see the faces out of everyone and how serious they took it because uh, they were all sports coaches uh, and how happy they were and even the, the lady who's talking 
Um, just keep an eye on what she's saying, and it, it was it was true. It was a really good experience. <laughs> Uh, so for the sound on on that one um again the, we will send the link out that video if you need to you need to, to watch it again um but hopefully you got you could just you could see people uh even if you couldn't hear what the lady was saying you could see people in the background these adults and you can see i think there was one bit where the guy dodges two bludges throws himself on the floor goes to get up and someone just completely blocks the goal okay so the game's non-stop the amount of fun that them guys had and us that day was was absolutely uh, was was superb. Okay, and that's what the training events uh, where we come down and do. They're a couple of hours long, uh, and we engage it that way. And that's, that is the best way we can seek uh, to learn. Now, just uh, to one of our partners, so you'll you'll see the the Youth Sports Trust. Now, some of you might have seen this before. Um, they've just launched the after school uh, club to fill the void of the lost after school extracurricular clubs that's going on during uh, the national lockdown. Now, well, these do take place at five o'clock every day. Uh, every weekday and join and you can join live for the YouTube and you can see the link uh, on the screen there. It is brilliant. A lot of the activities and the content that's going on there and that's delivered every day that are, that are delivered by the Youth Sports Trust Athlete Mentors is really do superb. So if you're thinking for something like your club has just shut down, you're thinking, I want to get our kids active a little bit, get them on there, send the link out there, um, pass them on, you'll see the... Um, You'll see everyone, you'll see the more people, more people getting active. And then once our, our clubs can go back on, then we can start implementing stuff we've learned off the Youth Sport Trust, stuff we might have learned today off the Quidditch, and back to our normal uh, elements of, of sports with, within schools. Um, that does bring us uh, to the end of our, of our webinar. Just before we leave, as I said at the very start, we're not just... Uh, Quidditch, okay? We do many, many different things, as I said before. Quidditch, the Children's University, and a big one now, which is really relevant, and you might have been in our, our, our outdoor learning cross-curricular webinar in the past. Um, really relevant now, okay? Really about getting kids and getting them outdoors as much as we can, just like the sports we're trying to do. Um, as the Youth Sports Trust and Appy are telling us and the government are telling us, get outside and do it. So if you do go on our website, we also have a link there to our outdoor learning. Um, activities and we have different packages so if you're if you're interested in anything whatsoever uh, that we have to offer have a look at the website um, go on there our details are on there you can contact us uh, I'll stay on until the last person is, is logged off today I'll give it a couple of minutes in case anyone wants to ask any questions on the chat function um, or again if you want to grab our email off the website or well, my email is just joe at enricheducationuk.com Please feel free uh, to ask as many questions or give us an email anytime over any of our products, whether it be outdoor learning, Quidditch, anything at all. Uh, thank you for, for logging on today. Thanks for joining us. Uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your week. And as I say, I'll give it a couple of minutes uh, for everyone to log off or in case anyone wants to ask any questions. Thank you.